So I've got a whip here, base loaded, made by PC Tel. It's fairly good quality. NMO mount on the fender of the truck. There's the model number of the antenna. It's actually made for 27 megahertz, but uh, I've taken and trimmed the antenna down to work on 10 meters. So we're gonna go do a little noise hunting with this antenna on the fender. I find it works pretty good. And uh, what we're doing is we're looking for power lines that are not behaving well. Victor Echo 6 Whiskey Golf Mike. Thank you. You are about 5 5 into Alberta. So inside the truck here, I've got an FT-857D set up to run on some lithium batteries here. So it's portable. I can take this thing and uh, carry it around with me outside. I like this radio because uh, it, it does pretty much everything. Um, all bands, all modes. I call it my Swiss Army Knife radio. So I've got it tuned to 21205, which seems to work very well for picking up power line noise or uh, faulty components on power poles. And... Um, we're going to go for a little drive here. Oh, I forgot to show you here. I've got uh, an attenuator. So I've got 20 dB of attenuation added in between the antenna and the radio. What this does is it stops me from picking up every little hiccup that I uh, uh, encounter as I'm driving around because there's, there's a lot of noise, but uh, most of it is so small that it really doesn't matter. But what we're interested in is the big stuff. Let's go for a little spin and see if we can pick something up. So I got the phone propped up sitting on the dash, so I'm not holding my phone while I'm driving, just so you know. Turn the radio up here. Okay, so we got some noise here. I'm just going to drive past to make sure it's not multi-path. That's usually if it is, you'll you'll hear the noise fade in and out as you're driving, but I didn't. So I think it's really close to that spot. I'm going to turn around here. And we're going to head back that way. With this setup, I find you can't really be ripping along at 50 or 60 kilometers an hour. You kind of have to be puttering, so hopefully you're not holding up traffic while you're trying to do this. Or you might have to come up with a different arrangement. Okay, so there it is again. gonna go check out these poles and see what we can find so what I've done is I've gone and switched to the well above two meters this is commercial but we're only receiving so it works works better uh, at that frequency on VHF and I've got a Yagi here it's a dual band VHF UHF so two meters and 70 centimeters and I find once I get out on foot it's better to try to track the noise source down on two meters and you can see we're already picking stuff up uh, two meters isn't very specific as to exactly Let's see we can get noise there it seems like it's kind of coming from all over the place so two meters doesn't really narrow it down specifically but if you kind of noodle around you can get a feel for where the signal is strongest We're getting some multi-path here. 
Uh, it's kind of coming in and out. Okay, so it's generally wanting to point me in this direction. So I think we're going to go examine these two poles here and see what we find. But in order to do that, yeah, we're getting a pretty strong signal here. Okay, so I switched to 430 megahertz and I'm standing exactly the same spot I was picking up all that noise on VHF and I got nothing. Well, a little bit. Let's, this is getting louder. Which one of these is it? I think this one sounds louder. something on this pole. So we're gonna switch to the ultrasonic and we're gonna take a look at each one of the components on this pole because there is something on this pole that's not behaving. Okay, so we've switched over to the handy dandy MFJ ultrasonic receiver and I'm gonna turn it on here and search this pole and see what we get. Okay, I got something on that top insulator there. I'm gonna put the phone in to the headphones and see if you can hear this. Yeah, it's definitely making noise. So you can go above and below and side to side and the dish points right at it. It's that top insulator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark down this pole number and I'm gonna get a hold of our local power company that uh, does the maintenance on the poles here. It's Atco Electric where I am. And we're gonna give them this pole number and report that as a problem. I do keep this video as evidence, the video and pictures that I've got with the equipment that I use, and they seem to accept it. They take it quite well, and I've always had good luck with them coming out and fixing things when I report it. But I don't report every little thing. This, this particular one is pretty bad. I'm picking it up at my station. It is causing harmful interference, so I don't just drive around and pick up every little thing and report it to them. Uh, try not to be a nuisance. Well, back at the station, and this is the noise that I've got on 160 meters. And let's go to 80 and see if I can... Yeah, it's not great, eh? And, yeah, you can definitely hear it. Well, I'll try and listen for the 80 meter net here tonight on 3.7 megahertz, and... Uh, We'll see if I can get into the Alberta Public Service net. If the conditions are good, I should be able to copy the net, but that's a lot of noise. Well, one thing about amateur radio, there's just no end to the projects. So that MFJ dish that I was using earlier, uh, the ultrasonic unit, it works pretty good, but it leaves a bit to be desired. It's actually quite noisy. It picks up a lot of, um, a lot of noise that it shouldn't, and you have to hold it a certain way and and those, uh, I don't know, to get it to work. This, uh, what I've done is, is I've, I've found a 
ultrasonic transducer that is electrostatic instead of piezo. So this is a broad frequency unit. It's capable of picking up ultrasound between 20 and 100 kilohertz. And I've built a circuit here around an NE612 double balanced mixer. And uh, so what I've done is I built a VFO. So what this does is it allows me to tune the frequency that I'm going to mix down from um, through the 612 and then listen through. There's some filtering here, bandpass filtering and then headphone amplifier. This is the uh, high impedance uh, JFET TLO72 preamp for the very high impedance electrostatic transducer. So this takes and uh, generates the 200 volts DC that's required to bias the transducer. And then this uh, takes and uh, converts from high impedance to low impedance and sends that signal over to the double balance mixer to be uh, brought down to audio frequencies so we can listen to it. Anyway, the whole point of this is to build a broad spectrum unit that I can tune so I can if there's any noise sources that I'm not interested in listening to I can tune away from it and uh, the other thing too is is I'm doing a much better job at uh, looking after noise issues um, the LM386 head or audio amp that's used in the MFJ I did try it in this circuit and I wasn't happy with it it makes a lot of noise there's a lot of hiss there a lot of background noise and this one here also is much quieter for uh other unwanted electrical noises it doesn't pick it up so bad so anyhow this is the project and if i get it going i've actually ordered um i've ordered a, a parabolic reflector from edmund optics and i'm going to build it into that somewhat similar to a construction project i found published by the arrl um, i suppose the dish is the same but the rest of the circuitry is very much different so anyhow this is uh, what i'm up to 7-3, and we'll see you again next time. This is Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Oscar, formerly Victor Echo 6, Whiskey Golf Mike.